Hello everyone. Hope you're having a great week. Today is Monday, March 21st, 2022. My name is Larissa Hoffman. I'll be the host of this webinar today. I am the Vice President of Edge Factor. I have lived and breathed e-learning tools and career exploration over the last 10 years, and especially in Wayne County and in upstate New York. There have been uh, an incredible number of projects that we have accomplished over the last several years specifically, I'm going to be able to showcase today to you the Edge Factor platform, some of the awesome career exploration tools that are available for you as educators, as well as for your students and for their families to be able to access at home and in school. So I'm going to start just at the very beginning. Edge Factor, how did we start? Uh, what is the goal of all of the tools that we create? So 10 years ago, almost to the day, uh, I received a phone number, for, uh, a wrong phone call from a man named Jeremy Bout. At the time, he had just wrapped up his 12-year manufacturing uh, uh, career in five-axis machining, and he had built his first film showcasing how manufacturing is used in the real world. It was uh, about a 30-minute production. He called me looking for someone else. We got to talking, and um, within a few minutes, actually, of that call, we somehow stumbled upon the fact that both of us graduated from high school with little to no idea of what came next. Next. And so we opened up, uh, we kind of walked through those doors that had been opened to us, but we both understood that if we had had a plan, an idea even of what industry and what career we wanted to launch while we were still in high school, we would have been much better prepared to more wisely choose the programs that we went into into high school. And so fast forward, here we are today. Uh, Edge Factor was founded in 2010, so 2022, we're 12 years in, and to this day, the passion that we had in that call uh, still is, is what drives us and what drives our team. Our goal is to take students and learners and even job seekers on a journey from I have no idea what I want to do with my life all the way to I have browsed the opportunities, I've made informed decisions, and I've successfully launched a local training and career pathway. When you think about that experience, we call it the career journey. And there are four key phases. Number one, you got to get inspired. Inspiration, using the power of cinematic storytelling to hook students and learners, get them excited to start their career journey. Exploration, helping people to dig deeper, understanding what industries and careers exist. Preparation, how to prepare to enter the workforce, both with STEAM and with soft skills, technical skills as well as the final phase, connection, getting connected to local opportunities, understanding that you do not need to go to New York City or, uh, or even Rochester to find incredible opportunities right within your region, right in your own backyard. There's incredible training programs and companies that are available. And so without any further ado, I'm gonna step into the Edge Factor platform. Here you've got thousands of videos, lesson plans, activities for students, digital tools centered around e-learning and career exploration. And so I'm gonna to head to the browse page here on the sidebar. This is the, the second button. And here you can view our entire e-learning library by series. So I wanna take the next little bit and go through highlighting some of the key tools that are available for you. When you think again, back to the career journey, here at the top of the page, you can see inspiration. We've got nine different series of content that is meant to inspire and get your audience excited for their career journey. You'll also note that there are grade levels attached to each of our series. So Edge Factor is very focused on creating content for every single grade in kindergarten to grade 12. The neat thing I will say, I have to take a moment to pause, uh, as, of this, as of 12 p.m. today, we now have content, content for kindergarten to grade two. Uh, previously, this morning, we only had content for grades five through 12. Now we've got a brand new series under soft skills talking about uh, Pet Factor, which I'll give you a sneak peek look at in a bit. 
We are also building content for grades three and four, and that is coming out this spring as well. So there will truly be content, at least a minimum of one series for every single grade. All right, back to the top. Let's talk about inspiration. Some of the key tools that I wanted to highlight. Number one, grade seven, eight content for skilled responders. This series introduces students to what types of industries exist, how do they impact the world, and who are the people that have launched successful careers within each of these industries? How did that initial spark happen for them? For instance, here you've got a female electrician. What is what uh, the world of uh, uh, construction and architecture? What does a day in the life even look like for an electrician? And how did, in this case, Andrea get excited about that career? As I scroll down, you can see many different industries uh, of content. Here you've got a real estate agent, the list goes on and on. If you want to play a video or access the, the quizzes or lesson plans, simply click on the thumbnail and it will open it up in the media player. The video will play automatically and you can also click on closed captioning and there's closed captioning options. Another quick pause moment. This you will see uh, in the upcoming future a lot of different languages provided for, uh, for subtitles. That's another thing that's coming very soon. So here you've got a two to three minute video. They're talking about the industry. There's some voiceover and some beautiful visuals. And then we meet somebody who's in the field talking a little bit about what they do. And again, what inspired them to launch their career. So that's an example of one of the series that we create under inspiration. Another key tool under inspiration is the Edge Factor Show. Most uh, people know about this series because it's one of our most popular. Here you've got award-winning films, TV episodes, and short stories, and they are highly cinematic. So again, tapping into the power of storytelling to help showcase what opportunities exist in today's modern world and how you as a student can use your head, your hands, and technology to build something like an instrument or like a skateboard or like a utility vehicle for people in Cameroon, Africa, uh, like a, a lens that went to the Mars rover, the list goes on. I'm going to come back to this in a little bit because a lot of this content has actually been filmed in New York and I want to be able to showcase to you uh, a special landing page that we created with all of our New York content as well. We've got some really great short stories under that umbrella. Also included, careers of the future. Uh, all of these, I think except for one episode, have been filmed right within your region. This is a very sexy uh, series called Careers of the Future. How are emerging and disruptive technologies shaping the future and impacting every industry? Here, for instance, you've got what is additive manufacturing? How does it come alive in the real world at GE? If I click play on this for a moment, I'll just uh, showcase this for a quick second. I'll play about 30 seconds. This was filmed in partnership with uh, Monroe Community College. When transportation systems are efficient, they provide people with economic and social opportunities, access to markets and employment. But when they are deficient or too costly, it means reduced or missed opportunities and a lower quality of life for people everywhere. We're working to build resilient infrastructure by creating efficient methods of transportation. How does additive manufacturing fit in? So then we go back in time, we look at where the technology has been historically, where it is today, and then we introduce, in this case, uh, Down. a real life story of a company that is using this technology in really unique ways. So here you've got Kenneth from Advanced uh, Atomization Technologies. There you go, a Parker Aerospace GE Aviation right within your region. So this whole series was, uh, was a big project. We've got many different episodes really giving a nod to where is the future headed? What does that career of the future or workplace of the future look like? For instance, we filmed in partnership with uh, Wegmans, agriculture and big data. How is big data changing the way we, we purchase right our groceries, food, um, farm to table idea, clean energy, lots of different episodes here that I'm very excited. University of Rochester Regional Health Center, 
talked about how artificial intelligence is shaping the future uh, in the world of healthcare as doctors are able to really quickly use AI to analyze medical imaging. So again, all inspirational, all meant to hook people, get them excited to think about their future. I'm not gonna go through the rest. You can check it out. It's kind of like Netflix, right? It takes a bit of self-exploration, but all of this goes back to inspiration. Inspiration leads into exploration. And here you've got many different types of series uh, meant to help students to get excited about industries, careers, and education pathways. Under industry overviews, we have content under every single industry. So we've got an industry overview video for every industry. What's it like to work in the world of agriculture or finance or hospitality and tourism? These are two to three minute videos and these Tracy and Audra, uh, as well as other people who are watching the recording um, who might be in similar positions, this is a great way for you to also begin that student's journey. Help them to understand what types of industries exist in today's modern world and then go dig, uh, digging deeper after that. So I love to showcase, yes, maybe an inspirational film, but then quickly get into, hey students, explore your industry overviews, decide which industries are interesting to you, and then dig deeper into our career profile videos. Career profile videos include uh, over 415 day in the life of videos. These showcase what are the typical responsibilities of this career, what types of science, technology, engineering, art, and math come alive, uh, what types of soft skills are important to that career, and what types of tools and equipment do they use. So for instance, here you've got a business development administrator from Rootstock Cider Works that's local to you. As I scroll down, many different industries uh, with, again, just 415 careers, my goodness. So lots and lots of content under the career profiles and we continue to create mass amounts of content. In fact, tomorrow we're filming at an international airport showcasing another five different types of careers that come alive there. So at any given week, we are creating content and career profiles is one of the top series that we continue to build content uh, you know, for, for all sorts of different industries. Career profiles and also virtual field trips help students discover what it's like to work in real world careers. We have over 200 virtual field trips. These are called virtual workplace experiences. Each video has uh, a lesson plan attached to it, as well as a pre and post video activity for students to complete. And we're going to talk about in a little bit how to create a class and assign content to that class so that they can complete those activities and so that you as the educator can monitor their responses. So let's click on one for a moment. I'm going to click on, ooh, this is a good one for you, Reliant Credit Union filmed right within your region. So here, which areas of STEAM are used in banking services? So this helps students as a pre-activity to kind of gauge what they know about, uh, what they think going into this video um, in terms of, you know, how do they think STEAM is used in, in banking? Obviously math would be used in all sorts of ways. When they, they can complete it right here and they can click next, list how many types of loans. I'm gonna say, you know, eight, great, next. So this is a quiz that can be done right within the platform. And I'm gonna click on watch now. I'm gonna check out what this video looks like. I'm just gonna put it on a mute as we play it. So this was a video that we partnered with your local Wayne County IBA to create. And here you've got one host taking students on a virtual field trip tour, walk and talk of what it's like to work at Reliant Credit Union. Here he talks about a company overview in the first chapter. Chapter two, he talks about what types of soft skills, transferable life skills come alive in the world of finance. Here he talks about specific math, statistics, and prob probability in finance, analytics. And he talks about in chapter four, being dedicated to your career. So if I click play here, you've got the host and he's taking students behind closed doors, showcasing the different areas of the company, the different career opportunities, and really helping them to understand what is it like to work in that credit union world of finance, if you will. 
So again, we've got over 200. I look at this one as well. Uh, here's your Macedon Public Library virtual tour. Uh, again, quite local to where you are. The list goes on. Uh, we also have under Education Pathways, under Exploration here, uh, videos on CTE pathways and CTE programs, helpful for students to begin to understand uh, what types of CTE, let's say BOCES programs also exist. So these, a lot of them were also filmed in upstate New York. They're nice bite-sized promotional tools. I'm gonna head back to the browse page. Again, you can begin to understand how this, the tools when paired together are kind of like Lego blocks. You can take this content and build out assignments for your students to complete. Underneath preparation, we've got all sorts of content. We've got ethics and employability. I'm going to click on employability for a moment. Here you've got videos and quizzes that talk about things like leadership and teamwork, problem solving, the list goes on. This is one of our most popular series because educators, uh, regardless of which grade level or which um, I should say within high school, but regardless of what type of classroom they teach, are looking to talk about things like, what does it mean to have personal time management? What does it mean to be a lifelong learner and how can that be applied to each of the classes? We have a nine unit financial literacy series. We've got 150 soft skills on the job videos, one minute long that share what types of transferable life soft skills are important to different careers. And we've got the brand new Pet Factor series. As I scroll down, this is a really great segue into a couple of things. I wanna talk about preparation as it pertains to competency-based uh, understandings. So Edge Factor has hundreds of videos that showcase how science, technology, engineering, art, and math all come alive on the job and in different ways. What are these STEAM topics? How are they used? As well as deep libraries of skills and processes, tools and equipment, and safety awareness topics that come to life on the job. To view this content, I'm going to click on the careers tab. Instead of individually clicking on each of those thumbnails, which you are welcome to do, I'm actually going to jump down into, let's say, manufacturing and highlight what this content, uh, when it feeds into an industry page, what it looks like. So on this page, instead of viewing the content by series, which is what we've been doing on the browse page, I want to view it by industry. I don't care what series it's part of, just give me all the content that's tagged to the industry I'm interested in. So here on the manufacturing page, you can see all of the virtual workplace experiences, all of the career profiles. There's a show all button that can collapse or expand. And now we step into how does science, STEAM, and tools and equipment come alive in the world of manufacturing. So for instance, what is Newton's second law and when am I gonna use it on the job? Why should I care? Technology, the evolution of forging. When you think about manufacturing, obviously we've got deep libraries that talk about all sorts of tools and equipment and technology. What is CAD CAM and design filmed with MasterCAM and SolidWorks? What is a technical drawing? Why should I care? How does it work? How can I bring a design idea to life using CAD CAM and manufacturing? What is 3D printing? What is quality control? The list goes on and on. What's a CNC machine? What's a MIG welder? What's a TIG welder? What's the difference? <laughs> and so as I scroll through, this is a really interesting piece of, um, uh, of content because in our version eight, which is scheduled to go live in July, Edge Factor is, is upgrading essentially our platform using new technologies. We will be able to actually package these uh, competency-based videos with quizzes and build out courses and badges. So this is a big piece of where Edge Factor is heading. And again, this is going live in July, where you will have, for instance, your welding course, the basics of welding, where your students or your learners will be able to log in, complete a series of videos and quizzes, and upon successful completion, receive a badge. 
So this is really exciting stuff. Um, when you think about the uh, interoperability even of the content that we've created and the fact that it is so modular in nature allows us to really play around with, with building out courses and allow you as educators to do the same. So I'm happy that we were able to walk through uh, some of that content that we create. I also just wanted to complete that career journey understanding. We've gone from inspiration into exploration, exploration into preparation, and now preparation, which is made up of both, remember, soft skills and competency skills. Now we step into connection. And here you've got your directory, which has company and school profiles. You also have your custom Wayne County has the edge page. And I want to take a moment to really showcase what this looks like because it's got all of the content that we have filmed locally in your community. So here, I'm going to go back to this for a second. On the home page, when you first log in, there's a big uh, icon right here. It says Wayne County has the edge. If you click on this, you'll be able to be taken to your Wayne County has the edge page. And on this page, everything is available for free. And you can see some of the local content that we filmed in that region. So for instance, here you've got ABX Innovative Packaging, a virtual field trip. There's the VIP Fit Health Club. You've got a local gym, so we, we filmed there. We already showcased the credit union. You've got the library, as well as the manufacturing Hansford parts and products. So you've got five virtual field trips uh, filmed within your region. And while we were on site, we again grabbed the opportunity to, to create some career profile videos. So while we were on site, for instance, of filming the virtual workplace experience at ABX, we met Alonzo and we were able to film a career profile video with him. The list goes on. Everything on this page is open to the public with no login required. You can simply share edgefactor.com forward slash Wayne and why with everyone in your region. This is a great way for you to not only see the content easily that was located uh, within your region, filmed in your region, but also share it with parents and share it with families who might not have their own Edge Factor logins. Here you've got career pathways at Rochester Regional Health. There's an inspirational video called Optical Illumination, uh, you know, again, with the lenses that are going to the Mars rover and to all sorts of space expeditions. We're building out company profiles in your region as well, helping to raise awareness of what companies exist within your region. And the list goes on. All of that falls under the connection piece. So, now that we've taken a good look at the content that Edge Factor creates and the modular different series as it pertains to the career journey, I want to showcase some of the custom pages that we've created, as well as get into how to create a class and how to assign content to the class. So I'm going to click on uh, just a couple of these. So underneath training programs here, if you're a CTE, uh, you can check out that page. You can scroll through the Steam. All I did was click on Browse Content. You're welcome to dig deep, and, and these are kind of fast links, if you will, of different series that are available. And we also have four free toolkits this year. And for instance, Take Our Kids to Work Day and a couple of custom landing, landing pages that you can check out. So I'm going to click on Classroom. And I see, Tracy, that uh, you don't have access to it, so we're going to have to bump up your um, access. So I'm going to log out as you, and I'm going to log in as my demo, and Jenna is on the call, so she will make sure that you can access that. So I'm going to click on Edge Factor. I'm going to log in. This is a helpful thing anyway. Uh, here, when you click on the login page, you're welcome to sign in with Google, or you're welcome to put in your email and your password. I'm going to sign in. Great. And now I'm going to click on classroom. I'm going to create a test class. So for those of you that uh, want to showcase Edge Factor in in-person settings, 
you're very welcome to at any time. You can simply log into your Edge Factor membership and you can check out the pages and the content. You're welcome to uh, publicly play the content at any time. So if you are in an in-class setting or maybe you've got an event or an assembly coming up, you are more than welcome to showcase all of the different media that we create that we've covered today. You've got access to do that. If, however, you want your students to complete quizzes and log in individually, maybe you would like them to finish something for homework or for a weekend uh, project, then you can head to your classroom and you can basically add a group of students and you can create essentially a customized playlist of media for them to complete. So let's walk through this together. I'm gonna to click add class. And I'm going to call this Wayne County class. Great. My class details, I'm going to say discover industries and careers. And I'm going to say this is for my grade tens. Create. Excellent. So it says new class has been added. I'm going to change it to list view. I've got a lot of classes. Beautiful Wayne County. I'm going to open it up. And as you can see here, there's no students yet added and there's no content added. No problem. First, I encourage you add some content, add some assignments so that when your students log in for the first time, they're not seeing an empty class. They're seeing a class that has some content in them for them to complete. So I'm going to go to the browse page. I want to add some assignments to this class. So when I say grade 10, I'm going to click on launch point. Maybe I want to add some inspirational videos for my kids to complete or check out. Maybe I really like the story you turn. Okay, so I scrolled through this, I watched it, great. Here, this assign icon is right beside your favorites. Your favorites is the heart that adds it over here. Your assign icon is the three little lines and the plus symbol. So I'm gonna click that. It says, choose your class of students, Wayne County. And I'm gonna add a new assignment name. I'm gonna call this uh, Get Inspired, cool. And I'm gonna click Create. Now, maybe I want to build another uh, inspirational video into that assignment. I'm gonna scroll down here and I'm gonna add a careers of the future. I click on it. I find one that I think would be interesting for my students. Let's say automation, cool. Click the assign icon, choose my class of students. And this time, instead of creating a new assignment, I wanna add it to the get inspired assignment that I just created. So I can choose that and I can click assign, great. Now moving on, I'm gonna go back to the browse page and I want to add some career profile videos for my students to watch. Interestingly, when you think about a classroom, your classroom can be one student or it can be 500, there's no limit. Sometimes I build assignment uh, classrooms for a couple of students that I think would be really well fitted towards a certain type of industry or career. So for instance, I remember I, I had a group of students uh, I thought there were some young women in that class that would be interested in healthcare careers. So I created a special class and there was only like five or six students in the class and that's fine. It just meant that I was building out a special playlist, if you will, assignment uh, with some custom content just for them that I thought would pertain. Other times I've had many more students, 50 students come in where it was much more broad. So let's say I add a sign technician. I'm gonna click on the assign icon, choose my class of students. And now I'm gonna call this career profiles. Career profiles, and I'm gonna click create. So now I'm adding a second assignment to my class. Maybe I wanna to go to the Wayne page and I want some specific content. For instance, we filmed that Baldwin Richardson, a production operator, great. I will add her as well. <laughs> I gotta refresh. I'm still logged in as Tracy on this page. Great. Okay. So production operator, choose my class, career profiles. There we go. So to save time, we also have a button called assign all. Maybe I want to assign this entire block of content instead of individually hovering over all of them. I'm going to click on this assign all button, choose my class of students, and it will assign all of them. I'm gonna again choose career profiles and click assign. Great, I'm feeling good about where it's at. I'm gonna click view assignment. I will, I'm gonna 
be taken back into my class. And as you can see, I've got now two assignments, get inspired with the two videos that I added and my career profiles with all of these different videos. And there's quizzes attached to them as well. So if my students completed these quizzes, I would be able to check it out, mark or review. Click on this button, the three little dots. And then here would be my list of students, the grade that they received, has it been graded, yes or no? What's their progress? Not completed, uh, in progress or complete. Now it's time to add my students. So you've got a couple choices. Jay, if you wanted to bulk upload your students, you could. If you wanted to send Jenna from our support team a list of the first name, last name, email address of all of the students, that would make your, the lives of your educators easier because they could click on add edit users and they can simply check mark the students that they want part of that uh, class. So here I would click on the plus symbol people in this class and I'd go through and I'd add all of my students. If you do not go that way, or if you're at an event, let's say, and you want to send them home, maybe an assembly of sorts, you can still share the assign the class with your group by clicking on copy and share code. And what this will do is it copies this class code to your desktop, to your clipboard. Your, your attendees or your students, whoever you want added to the class can go to Edge Factor, create their free membership, and they can simply put in the quick code, the class code right here. So I clicked on the top right hand button, quick code, and I copy and pasted that link. And then you'll, you as the class owner would receive an invitation, that somebody you know, that you can basically approve uh, to join your class. So we have now gone through, and I know it's a lot of information, the Edge Factor content that is available under our browse page. We highlighted the ways that educators and students can view all of our content by our e-learning library by series, as well as by industry under the careers tab. And we've gone through how to create a class and add assignments and add students to that class. That means that we have gone through everything I really wanted to get through in today's session. I'd like to open it up now, Jay. Is there anything while we're still recording that you'd like me to cover at this time? So I just appreciate the emphasis on the Edge Factor uh, Wayne, uh, New York, as a great place to start. And um, if people wanted to ask uh, a local educator, uh, about their experience. Can you share what districts right now in Wayne County uh, have purchased or are utilizing um, uh, more, more of the service than just the, uh, the Edge Factor slash Wayne New York, who's, who's got, who would be a good person for people to connect with? Sure, so we actually applied for a grant, Wayne County IDA and Edge Factor to create media, as well as to provide some schools with memberships. So Wayne County IDA can provide more information on this partnership. They also, I know, uh, included, for instance, um, I'd have to look at the list, but P-TECH. Uh, and there was another one, too. I can actually look it up right now if I stop sharing my screen. And while you're looking that up, I guess I just opened it up to Tracy and Audrey, if you guys have, either of you have questions specifically. I don't think I have questions. Um, it was good to go through some other areas that maybe I haven't delved deep enough in and maybe answered some of my own questions about how I could use it in other classrooms or getting teachers to utilize the content other than just my um, presentation or my time in the classroom. So um, again, it just helped me a lot to see the classroom section. And Larissa, I think I will have access to that or Yes. I'm like already Friday, I have a fifth or a sixth grade classes I've been working with and I was going to use Edge Factor on Friday and I'm like, oh, now I can put them in the classroom piece of it. Yeah, sure with them. So that would be really helpful. Absolutely. And if you want ever to share a call, even a 15 minute call um, that would provide some custom recommendations and even build it out together, we're very happy to help with that. We've got a great team of support. 
uh, members that really come alongside educators to help them understand how to better utilize, maximize their membership. So don't be a stranger. If you've got questions, we are here. We are real people and we are very happy to help. <laughs> Audrey, do you have any questions? I do have a couple of questions, Jay, but I didn't know if Larissa wanted to stop the recording um, when we were finished with the overview or if you wanted me to ask my questions. Now. Well, let's keep your questions. And then um, Larissa, I think, has a little experience with video editing. So if she doesn't want your questions in, I'm okay. sure. <laughs> <laughs> you know, All right, very good. Serious. Audra, if you have the questions, other people do as well, probably. So let's just keep it rolling. So. This kind of piggybacks on what we were just discussing. I'm always confused as to what we have access to and what we don't have access to. And my superintendent will ask me, do we have access to this? Do we pay for this? And I'm like, oh gosh, I feel like I should be asking you that question. But I think the Gananda just has access to the Wayne Co County portion. Is that accurate? I believe so. Yes. So the two uh, schools slash district that has access currently is P-TECH and the Palmyra Macedon School District. Jay, okay. Yeah. And so I've we, been in, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. And then I think we purchased for Sotus and Williamson through, uh, through a grant we have. So we've got four sites that have the full um, expo. Yeah. So go ahead, Audra. I'm sorry. So I just wanted to, to say also that I've been in contact with our Pell Mac um, colleague who's just down the street from us and he said that he's going full force into edge factor this year and he's going to be um, one of our support people along with Tracy to help our group of Wayne County work-based learning coordinators to um, be able to ask questions of and pick their brains and get some best practice ideas from them as well moving forward. Excellent. Awesome. Okay, so as we then, uh, unless you guys have other questions, you're still welcome to, to ask more questions, but I would love to get a little bit, I know we've got a few minutes left in our session today. I'd love to showcase some of the upcoming tools that we are coding right now. Is that okay, Jay? Okay, so I'm going to share my screen. Okay, so this is going to be a little bit fast and furious. I will say if you want to attend a more in-depth uh, webinar on our upcoming features, you absolutely can. I'm going to share a quick link as well for you to register. Okay, uh, I'll, I'll add that to the live chat in a moment. Okay, so this is uh, some of the key updates that we are providing. So here, I'm gonna scroll up really quickly. This goes back to our K to gray strategy. Part of it is media creation, and then part of it is also features that will really provide that breadcrumb trail for people to move forward in their career journey. So some of the new content we've talked about, Pet Factor, I really wanna showcase about 30 seconds of this production just because it's, it's very fun. Here we go. Today's super skill is problem solving. Hey everyone, welcome to Pet Factor. Here's today's question. What does a general machinist, an industrial millwright, and a police officer have in common with Leslie and Jabba this spiny tail lizard? Hmm, they all like the beach? No, that's not it. Let's find out together. All right, so this is Jabba. He is called a Euromastic, or can also be called a spiny tailed lizard. <laughs> He's gonna be a little, a, a little bit of a wiggle worm, but that's okay. Keeping active is good for him. So he is actually a desert lizard. He is awesome. Um, he's actually super skilled by 
First, identify the problem. Jabba can't eat bugs for protein because he has trouble digesting them. You know, we humans need protein too for our muscles and bones. Second, create a plan. Please. So we take some of the life lessons that we can learn from taking care of animals and pets, very fun and very uh, colorful and graphic for the younger grades. We also have a new series, What's in Your Tool Belt, that we're building for grades three and four students. I'll play this really quickly as well. This is a loud one, I think. <laughs> Doesn't want to play. I'm in a presented, uh, presenter's mode. Um, we'll continue on. That one is fun. It's coming live soon. Stay tuned. I can try and refresh once more and, and see if we can get this playing for a couple seconds. I can also share it with you in a different way too. Take two. So welcome to a day in my world. I'm gonna tell you about being an iron worker and what is in my tool belt. So as an iron worker, we put the structural bones of buildings together. So this is the skeleton of a building and we have to connect it together. So if you look down here, you're going to see where there's to buy our harness. PBE is very important. You only have one life. You wanna make sure you take care of it. So like you put Lego together, structural steel goes together very different. So she talks about all of the different tools and equipment that she uses in her tool belt. We filmed already several of these and they are going live this spring. As I scroll down, I want to talk more uh, about the features of the platform than I do now of the media that we're creating. Because as you can see, modular in nature, we are able to create more and more content more and more quickly. But as for the accessibility and the actual experience within the platform, in July, we are launching a version eight of the platform, which is really our biggest launch ever. We will be having a, a mobile app right now. Yes, it's available. You can go to Safari or Chrome on your phone and you can access Edge Factor, but there will actually be a downloadable app that will be available both for teachers and for students and learners. Your sidebar will also receive a facelift. So there is something new, uh, which I will get to in a moment, called Journey. You'll be able to access our library with better and faster search results and filters. There will be a familiar and consistent design. The directory will have those get connected tools, as well as your workspace will allow you to build out courses build out your, for instance, school profile and information on your programs. The experience is getting smarter and smarter as we tap into uh, technologies like artificial intelligence and machine learning to better recommend content like never before based off of who you are, your interests, your location, as well as assessments that you've completed. Here, we've got the new journey map. So your new home page will be extremely customized just for you as the individual. There will be goals that you can set and complete. You'll be able to see all of the achievements that you've done. You'll be also be able to really quickly access and understand what content you have available, which goes back to Audra's question. What types of tools uh, can she access? The, that information will be more easily accessible under the products, under your journey map. Uh, all users' actions will contribute to their success. So everything that students watch and complete will be saved to their journey map. And it is personalized for every user, again, based on your goals, objectives, and interests. Another big piece, and this goes back to Tracy and Audra's uh, earlier question, how do we get started? One of the biggest and easiest ways that you will be able to help your students and learners get started is by completing assessments, interest-based assessments. For instance, the ONET interest pro uh, profile is one of the easiest ones to understand. This is widely known, widely used. Students 
learners, teachers will be able to come into their workspace and they'll be able to complete assessments and be able to answer questions to better improve their recommendations, understand their interests and strengths, as well as identify interests, careers, and skills that would match their personality and their interests. So this is a big piece of, of how students will be able to easily get started. Take the quiz, find out where your interests are, find out where your strengths lie, and be able to view content recommended for you. We touched on this a little bit as well. Going back to the idea on the browse page of the competency-based modular videos and quizzes, we are creating courses that will have badges attached to them when students watch, for instance, that Lincoln Electric welding content and learn about how science comes alive in the world of manufacturing, for instance, they will be able to complete that course and receive badges and achievements based on the successful completion of that course. So we are very excited. This is a huge area that uh, the functionality is going live in July and then the real work begins, right? Of being able to actually build out all of those courses. There will be edge factor courses and there will also be the avail uh, availability for you as the educator to of course build out your own courses as well. Based off of that, there will be achievements and badges received. This uh, portfolio piece is something that will be available come September. It's not going live at the very beginning of July. It will be later in the summer as we build and build on innovation after innovation. The portfolio system will allow learners essentially to be able to publish their achievements. So when they're applying for an apprenticeship or they're applying for a new position, or maybe they wanna showcase some of the things that they've been learning, they will be able to publish and share their portfolio with different badges that they've earned. So for instance, you could have the Wayne County Career uh, Awareness Badge where they've watched all of the career profiles filmed in your local community. You could have the careers of the future badge where they've watched and completed quizzes on the careers of the future, understanding new emerging and disruptive technologies. The soft skills badge, the list goes on. As the system gets smarter, we wanna make sure it's more easily shareable. This goes into plugins, interoperability, and all of these things, uh, being able to deliver content to meet the learner where they're at. You've got privacy and personal data that of course is at the heart of all of this. And we have gone through many third party uh, auditing and certifications uh, to be an approved ed tech program. And so this has been a huge focus for us over the last year as well. I'm gonna leave it there. I could go on and on. I know it's a lot of information. Uh, hope you're, you're feeling the passion that we have for this project, but also for where it's going because there's so many things that we're working on right now and things are becoming easier and easier, more and more simplified for you, our user, to really understand what does Edge Factor have to offer me and how can I easily plug it in? So that's well, it. Larissa, thank you so much for the time. I feel like as you've, uh... As you've continued on, uh, perhaps it's the brightness of the opportunities and edge factor that has more and more uh, light bouncing off of my my scalp here. But you yes. <laughs> uh, seriously appreciate everything you've shared and look forward to sharing this out. And I think that um, I'm really Tracy. It's going to be really important for you and for Pelmac. Uh, and maybe for Larissa together again to do something for other schools in Wayne County so that they can hear. Uh, like your sixth grade class. I think that's going to be the story that we need to tell. And I really look forward to hearing about that. And um, I hope, Larissa, that maybe we could partner with Tracy and with folks out of Pelmac and folks out of P-TECH to really talk about the impact of Edge Factor in Wayne County so that more schools will buy on. Because um, I think Abosi's Coaster and other opportunities like that are there for us if, um, if we can, uh, especially with that mobile device. And if I had one more question for you, um, we have a, a study work program that's not tied to a school. And I was wondering if I could talk with you offline about um, licensure. It's run through SOTUS, but it's available countywide. These are young people that are feeling a little disconnected from school, a little disconnect. They may have dropped out or at risk for dropping out. They might be 20, 21 year olds that don't have uh, a, you know, a chosen career pathway that are still trying to find their way. 
and I wanted to see about accessing the full content and power of Edge Factor for, for that audience. So maybe we can talk offline about that. And I appreciate your dedication to uh, finding uh, pathways. I love the inspiration, exploration, preparation. I love that. I, I love that phrasing. And it, it aligns so much with what I experience working with young people day to day. So thank you. Wow, beautiful, Jay. Thank you. And it does feel like we're at the beginning of the beginning. I will say that if we can focus in the very near future into making sure everybody can log in, let's take care of the data so that once the version eight and the assessments are live, every student can easily log in and they can build out that assessment and we can recommend content and they can have fun exploring on their own. So I would say in the very near future, let's really focus on the data, making sure that we have the data added to the system so that uh, as these features are being released, they can easily tap into them. Sounds good, Larissa. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. And I'll send you the recording afterwards. We'll talk soon. Appreciate you. All both. right. And we'll send you the link where we post it. Take good care. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thanks, Larissa. Bye.